Let's get started with the skeletal system and look at some of the basics. Now let's start with functions of your skeletal system. Number one, framework. This is what gives you the overall structure of your body. Remember, bone is the hardest, densest tissue that you have in you. All the other softer tissues are attached to it. So this generally gives us the framework of our body. Acts as levers. Our skeletal muscles pull on bones. And there's actually three different types of levers that bones form with these skeletal muscles. You'll see those further along. Protection of organs. Remember, since bone is very strong, it makes a very good outer protective layer. Think about how your skull protects your brain, how your sternum and ribs protect your heart and lungs. Mineral storage. If you look inside a bone, it's something like the hydroxyapatite. There's a large amount of calcium and phosphates. There's some other things stored there, too. Hemopoiesis, which is blood cell production. Remember, inside your bones, you have the bone marrow. And that is where every red blood cell, white blood cell, and platelet is made. Energy storage. Remember, as we get older, the red marrow slowly changes into yellow. And it's still basically the same thing, the place where you got the blood cell production going on. But as we get older, we don't have as big of a demand for blood cell production as what we did when we were young and growing. So what happens is adipose tissue uh, replaces some of that space. So that's what they mean by energy storage. And then again, look at the structures you see in the skeletal system. Bones, cartilage, ligaments, and tendons. And don't confuse the ligaments and tendons. Remember, ligaments bind bone to bone where tendons are bone to muscle. The average adult's going to have about 206 bones. Now, what do you mean by average? I thought we all had the same number. No, we don't. But that is what you'll find for most people, but it's not unusual to maybe find an extra rib or two or an extra bone in the skull. So let's just go with 206. That's a good average. Now look at the two main divisions of your skeletal system, axial and appendicular. Now the axial is what you find down the center axis of your body. Go right down the middle, top to bottom. You see your skull, your vertebrae, and your sternums, and your rib cage, and all these bones associated with it. We're going to look at all those individually. The appendicular is what's attached to the axial. So that's going to include your upper and lower limbs, plus what's called the girdles, which are the bones that hold your upper and lower limbs to the axial division. So you kind of got this center axis right down the middle, then appendicular, upper and lower limbs, plus the girdles, the bones that hold them to the axial. We'll get to all those individually. Now look at the axial division and the number of bones you see in different places. Most people's skull as an adult is going to have 22 bones. The auditory ossicles, three inside your right ear, three in your left, are used for sound amplification. You'll see those when you get to the special senses. Hyoid bone is deep back behind your mandible. You can't feel it. There's lots of tongue and throat muscles attached to it, but it's there. It's the most freely movable bone in the body there. Most adults are going to have 26 vertebrae. We're going to break those down into the different regions. Look at the numbers, the shape, and the functions. 24 ribs and then one sternum. So there's the axial division. That's what's right down the middle of your body. Now again, look at the appendicular. Here's your upper and lower limbs plus what's called the girdles, what binds these upper and lower limbs to that axial. So first up here, you got two scapulas, what you think of as your shoulder blades, and then your clavicles, your collarbones. That's what holds the upper limbs to the axial division. You notice your upper limbs, 30 in one, 30 in the other for a total of 60. These coxal bones, that's what you think of as your hip bones there. And that's what holds your lower limbs to the axial division. And notice there's 60 bones in those total, 30 in one lower limb, 30 in the other. Now, another thing you want to learn before you get into all these parts and pieces of these bones, where we get into all the anatomy, are these terms used with them. A lot of these terms you'll see used over and over. And if you know the English equivalent of the Latin word, it can greatly help you out in memorizing all these parts. So looking at some of these terms, a body is the main part. The biggest section of any structure, bone or anything, is what the body will be. A head will be an enlarged end, and just below it, there's usually a narrow constriction, and that's going to be the neck. You'll see margins or borders. Those are going to be edges of bones. Angles are a place where they bend. You see a sharp turn at those angles. A ramus will always be a branch off the body. A condyle, a smooth, 
rounded articulating surface. Often when you get to the ends of bones, like some of these long bones, they have smooth rounded ends where there's an articulation. In other words, a joint where it meets one or more other bones. Facets, just like the facet on a diamond, is a flat, smooth spot. Over on the right side, we see different types of projections. A process is going to be a prominent projection. A tubercle is going to be a small bone. Tuberosity, something knob-shaped, sort of rounded. And a trochanter is going to be a large structure. You'll see those when you get to your femur, very big bone from your hip to your knee. Epicondyles, remember epi is outer or above. So just above a condyle, which again is sort of a rounded end of many long bones, you'll feel these. You'll see these in the humerus, good place to find those. Some other ones, different types of ridges. A line is going to be a low ridge. A crest will be a larger prominent ridge. And a spine will be a very high ridge. Similar in ways, uh, the size of them is pretty much the difference. When you see examples of these, they'll make more sense. Looking at openings, you're going to see lots of foramen. That means hole in Latin, that's what it's always going to be. A canal or a meatus will be a tunnel or a passageway going back to something. Look in your temporal bones on the side of your skull, those little passageways going back to your eardrum, the tympanic membrane are good examples of meatus. A fissure will be a little cleft, sort of like a little crack. A sinus is always going to be a little cavity or a space. Looking at different types of depressions, <clears throat> you can see that a fossa is just a general term for a depression. A notch is a depression in a bone margin or edge. Fovea will be a little pit. Groove or sulcus is a deeper depression. And here's a picture of a skeleton right here, anterior and posterior views. But again, think about your two divisions, axial and appendicular. Again, the axial is what's right down the center. Right, all this right here in the middle. Appendicular is your upper and lower limbs plus the girdles that bind them to it. So we're going to look over all those bones and the main parts and pieces to each one of them.